If you read what the Greeks said, not what we think, but if you read what the Greeks said, they said they got everything from Egypt. They got all their knowledge from Egypt. Now, you, you've talked about a lot of the, the contributions that came out of the, uh, the medieval time. What about some of the more ancient ones? Uh, for example, uh, Nabda Playa, for example. Talk, talk about that a little bit. Okay, what was found at Nabta Playa was a series of stones stuck in the ground. And then um, a, a, a white American astrophysicist, Dr. Thomas Brophy, was called to study them. And then when he studied them, he realized, oh my God, these are astronomically aligned. And he put a general date that this must go back to 6,400 BC. And these astronomical alignments include um, uh, solstices, equinoxes, uh, Orion's belt, this kind of thing. And then he, re he found another bunch of um, stones that were a long way away. And he noticed they looked higgledy-piggledy. And then he then, um, just for fun, measured their distances from the main calendar circle and then realized that what was being mapped on Earth depicted light years when you're actually measuring the heavens. And so he tested his light years theory and looked at some stars, you know, um, and it worked out, wait a minute, this is, in mathematics, it's the concept of ratio and scale. But ratio and scale, meant, uh, calculating the distances of stars, and he's theorizing that the Africans of Napta Playa was doing this 6,400 <laughs> BC. Now, now, was this the precursor to the development of the first calendar? Yes, yes. Um, but in truth, um, Africans in what is today South Africa uh, did have a lunar calendar uh, going back around, some people say 37,000 years old, some say 42,000 years old, yeah? Um, but they, they found a, a bone which had 29 carvings into it, and therefore 30 spaces, 29, 30. Some people think that represents 29 and a half, and 29 and a half is the length of a lunar cycle. Yeah, and some mathematicians have gone there with that. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, obviously what the people of Nabta Playa had 6,400 BC was even more advanced because as I said they're calculating or what appears to be um, being able to reduce light years down to this notion of scale. And this is the mathematics of ratio and proportion. What amazes me about the whole feat is that what kind of stability and peace do you need to plot something like that yeah. over an extensive period of time. That's what is so amazing to me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get back into some of the ancient uh, Egyptian stuff. No problem. Um, because, I mean, that's what so many folks are, are interested in, and, and it, I certainly am uh, interested in, in Kemet. What are the greatest contributions that, that came out of the, the, uh, the heights of the uh, the uh, ancient Egyptian era. And for those who are watching, who, who may not know, we're talking about an Africa, a black African people. We're not talking about um, the Greeks or the, the Ptolemaic era. Nor are we talking about the modern Arab Egyptians. Okay, the, the, the ancient Egyptians. Okay, let's, talk, let's look at some of their developments. Um, they wrote... Um, four main mathematical documents that have come down to us. The most important one is the Rhind Mathematical Papyrus. That's not its ancient name, but that's the name that everybody knows it by. 
Uh, the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus has got 87 maths problems on them. And some of those maths problems look like what you did and what I did in high school. So you've got problems that are dealing with one unknown algebra, problems dealing with the area of a rectangle, area of a triangle, area of a trapezium, area of a circle. Um, there is a trigonometric problem where you're calculating what would today be called a cotangent um, and so on. Then you've got another papyrus called the Berlin papyrus where you're calculating two simultaneous equations and they've got two unknowns and you've got to solve for both unknowns. Again, this is bringing back people's high school mathematics memories back to them. So the ancient Egyptians had stuff like that going on. Then we have some of the medical papyri. There's the Ebers papyrus and the Ebers papyrus is um, a medical encyclopedia. And one of the things in the Ebers papyrus is it, it, it tells the doctor how to take the pulse, right? Then you have the way that a, an ancient Egyptian doctor would see the patient, where you assess the patient, you check for perspiration, you take the pulse, you percuss the chest, all of that kind of stuff that doctors do today. They were doing that kind of thing then. There's another document called um, the Edwin C. Smith Surgical Papyrus. That's a copy of a copy of a copy. But the copy that survived is 18th Dynasty. And it's believed to be a copy of a First Dynasty text. And Does that go been... back to Imhotep? Does that... This is before Imhotep. Because okay. Imhotep is Third Dynasty. Okay. So this is before Imhotep. And um, it has 48 cases of head and neck surgery. And the cases are all laid out in the same way, where they lay out the symptoms, they lay out a diagnosis, they lay out a treatment, and then they also have glossaries to explain the first dynasty language to an 18th dynasty surgeon, all right? Um, and because it's 48 cases, scholars think that it's one third of the original document. They think the whole document would have gone from head to toe and would have had perhaps 150 cases, but they believe that 48 cases have survived. Um, another area the ancient Egyptians excelled in is sport. Um, I was invited to uh, research a documentary on sport and a lot of things such as um, the race, the high jump, the long jump, uh, gymnastics moves, uh, wrestling. A lot Your of these brothers were doing it back then, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> if we take, for example, wrestling, there is um, uh, one of the tombs from the Middle Kingdom has got uh, 46, no, excuse me, is it 406? I can't remember. Uh, pairs of people engaged in wrestling moves. Does that make sense? And according to Walt Disney, yes, that Walt Disney, those moves could be read like a cartoon. You know, like with a cartoon, you're moving from one scene to another scene to another scene. So he gives the impression that it's actually two wrestlers fighting it out. And if you uh, were to show those images to a modern wrestler, they'd be able to tell you, oh, that move is this. That move is that. That move is... And they'd be able to tell you the names of the different moves because those moves haven't changed much in the last uh, 4,000 years or whenever it was. Um, board games. Um, the, the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Nubians had a game called Senet. And Senet is the precursor to backgammon. Yeah. So there's there's a lot that we can therefore pull out of the ancient Egyptian um tradition. And yeah, they 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 were a very, very important people. 
who, who contributed many, 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 many pages of black history. 